What's going on, y'all? This is your boy Crucial Keys. Welcome back. I'm so glad to see y'all again. I missed y'all. We back. We just gonna jump right back into it. All right. Uh, I did miss y'all, by the way. I hope y'all miss me too. But we back. We just gonna go right back into it, as you can see from this title. Uh, we're gonna do some theory now you guys know I did a video like maybe a few years ago about the way I think when I play and we're gonna do some theory because I'm gonna help you guys you know really the beginners the people that really don't understand theory <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the theory that I know but we're gonna do some some different stuff uh, it's not gonna be like a class, like a boring class you would go to a piano lesson where the guy's teaching you like. I ain't, we ain't about to do that. Now, you should know that, you know, practice that on your own time. Just, you know. Like, do that on your own time. What I'm about to do is I'm gonna show you guys uh the way i think when i play as far as theory so and i'm gonna try to do it in all 12 keys okay in this one video so let's see how it works out okay here we go so let's say we're in the key of c so we know our scale all right So we know our scale. So if I'm thinking like, what can I do? Cause I know I got, you know, C, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished, and back to C. Now you take that and you do that in every key, all right? I'm gonna slow it down. Take that and apply it to every key. I'm not. I don't have time to go through that. Okay, but those. Th that's the basics. So what I want to do is I want to show you guys the little secrets. Like, well, why did he do that? Why did he put that with that? Okay. So I'm going to show you guys some secrets, okay? So we know that in the key of C, there's all white notes. So you ask yourself, how do you, how do you incorporate the black notes, okay? So I did a video years ago where I showed this. I don't know. I think I did it in one key. But I'm going to show you guys the theory, okay? So this is what I do. So you go to the one. So let's play a regular C major seven nine chord, right? So now if you say I want to play the C sharp and C major, so what would you do? What chord would you play? Now me personally, I would play this chord. If I'm just going up straight up, this is what I would play. That's what I would play. That's a D flat augment seven sharp nine. Okay? That's what I would play. So if you were just playing some talk music, here's my theory. Okay. I'm gonna play in C major and I'm just gonna go up chromatically and just play some talk music. So I would play. That's the next chord, going to the D, which is the two in C. That's just the D minor nine, D minor 11 chord. Uh, so you could take that. And then going to the E flat, what would you do? What would you do? So for me, like you could say, oh, I could just take this chord and go up. Now, the reason why I wouldn't do that is because it throws off the flow, 
okay because if you go like that's not you're not flowing you're just taking one chord and you're just inverting it you're just you're modulating so like that's not flowing talk music okay so in theory to to keep us honest and keep us in that key you shouldn't play the same chord chromatically okay so take take the c major 7 9 chord and then you play that okay and then you take the next chord go to your d minor okay so you say, what will be the next chord? So we don't want to do this. We don't want to do that. So the next chord that I would play will be this. You got your E flat in the bass. So let's see what we got so far. You got. Okay. So that's what we got so far. So take that next chord. Now the next chord won't wouldn't be hard to figure out because it's inside the scale, the C major scale. So we play C major seven nine. That's in the scale. Then we play the D flat augment seven sharp nine. That's not in the scale. And then what do we do? Play the D minor eleven, which is in the scale. Okay. And then we play the E flat augment seven sharp nine, which is not in the scale. So the next chord for the E is obviously going to be in the scale. So if you figured out the pattern of what I'm doing, theory, this is what I'm doing. I'm taking the notes, the bass notes that's in the scale and playing the regular chord that's supposed to be there. Okay. But when I go to the notes that's not in the scale, I'm playing an augment chord or something obviously that's not what normally be in the C major scale so all of my white bass notes are gonna be this but when I get here they're gonna be different so let me give you an example of what I'm talking about so if I start on the one okay that's C major then when I go up, I'm changing my chord, right? Then go to the next chord. See what I'm saying? So I did, but I put this in the middle of it, okay? So go to the next chord. What's the next one? So I did, so let's go to the next chord. Now we gotta go to, a, now we gotta hit the black note in our bass. So question, what chord would you play right there for the F sharp? Let's see what we got. We could play, so you got, now you could do this. See that? That's a D add nine over G flat. Okay, you can play that. And you can make it simple. And then go to your G. See that? Okay, so I, I'm guessing that y'all seeing the pattern. Okay, so I got Okay, and then now I'm doing, I'm trying to be as basic as possible, okay? And then now what, what about the A flat or the G sharp? What, what about that note? What would you play there? Simple. Okay. Guys, take that. 
Now going to the A minor, simple A minor. See that? So so far we got Now what about the B flat note? What about that? Or the A sharp? What about that? Hmm. Simple again. We could just go. You could do that. That's a B flat major. Or if you don't like that, you could. You could do that. That's a B flat six sus two. And then you go to your B diminished. Back to your C major. See that? So <clears throat> you took this. All you did was you put the black notes in between. So you hit every note in your bass. You hit every note in your bass, but you just built you built a progression around the C major scale, but you just included the uh the uh black notes so you built you got triad you got your triads so you took your normal triads and you just turned it into talk music by adding those notes so this is what this is what we do this is what people do it's not as hard as it sounds you know, because I you can make something simple sound complicated. Okay? So if I if you were just standing around and I was playing the piano and you heard me doing this. but I really didn't do anything like I that was like really simple and you can go backwards so you could do did I miss something oh. See that? You just literally took what you, what your normal, made it into talk music. That That's how I think, okay? That's very simple. Hope you guys understand that. So that's the way doing it chromatically going up and then chromatically going down, all right? Now, let's go to the next key. So now we're in D flat major or C sharp. So <clears throat> now I'm going to take a different uh, different route with this one. So instead of just doing chromatically or doing like that, we're going to do it different. But I will show you quickly if you did it uh, chromatically. So. chromatically and then going down
So that's going down chromatically. Hope you guys can catch that. We're gonna keep it going. So now I'm gonna take a different approach in this key. Every key that we do, well, you know, you guys know it's 12 keys, obviously. So every in every key, we're gonna take a different approach. All right. So in this in in D flat major, we're gonna take a different approach. So theory, how I think. If we're just talking about talk music, stuff like this. Uh, if I'm just playing and I want to do something different instead of just going chromatically, this is something that I would do. So you in your key. And then you go to the six, which is the B flat minor. Something that I like to do, I like to think uh, I like to uh, isolate every chord so that my mind is thinking quickly the scale of the key of the chord that I'm hitting. So let me give you an example. I, I don't want to confuse y'all, but this is this is one of the, one of the things that I do when I play. So if I hit if I'm in D flat and I go to the to the uh, six which is B flat minor, I'm immediately, okay, B flat. What's the relative minor of B flat? G, G minor. So I quickly think that, right? So when I hit the B flat, I might go to the G minor. And you see that, you see how it sounds? But G flat minor is not in the D flat major scale. G is not in the D flat major scale. Okay, so unless you're jazzing it up, <clears throat> you wouldn't hit that that chord. Okay, especially if you're just playing simple. If you're just playing simple, basic triads and chords and everything, you wouldn't hit that. So. Uh, immediately my mind goes okay g uh, uh b flat what's the relative minor of b flat major g minor so i i hit the g hit the b flat and then i go to the g minor right then immediately when i hit the g minor hmm g g minor what's the relative minor of g major e minor so when I hit the B flat, I hit the G minor, and then I go to the relative minor of G major. See that? And it's just a, a big circle. It's a big circle. And you go to the E minor. Now you gotta ask yourself, what's the relative minor of E major? Y'all know it? C sharp or D flat minor. So when you go B flat, what's the relative minor? G minor. What's the relative minor of G? Of G? E minor. What's the relative minor of E major? D flat minor. What's the relative minor of of a uh, D flat major? We're right back where we started. You see what I'm saying? It's like a big circle that you can go through, and it's all about where you start. It's all about where you start in that circle. So if you start on the B flat, you're gonna go boom, 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 boom. Okay? It's all about where you start. Now, <clears throat> we're gonna go, I'll show you guys that in, in another key too, so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. But this is one of the things that I do when, I put, when I'm just playing around, and, you know, I, I have to play talk music or whatever, filler music, whatever. This is some of the things that I do just to keep it flowing, you know, because I don't want to have any, you know, moments where the music is like, you know, like just it's not flowing. So this is one of the things I do to keep myself flowing. Well, you see how you can change it around like you can literally change the melody so it sounds different to the people that are listening but to you it's the same thing 
you're literally playing the same baseline over around you're going in a big circle over over and over again but to the people that are listening it sounds like you're playing magic but it's it's really not nothing difficult at all and you don't even have to chord it the way i'm chording it you can chord it simpler so you could just do if you want c sharp you could do like this and then go back to your b flat it's that simple so i'm gonna, I'm gonna play it slow that's you could do it like that that's your first chord that's the b flat minor that's the G minor 11, okay? Then you got the E minor 11. Then you can chord the D flat minor like that. That's the D minor nine, okay? So these are some of the things. Now, the key is to flow. You can't have two, you can't have a big gap in between these chords, okay? They gotta connect to each other. So if you're playing, Like you can't don't play it like like don't wait that long all right you gotta connect them flow okay and feel it feel the chords that you're playing okay i say that all the time when i'm teaching feel the chords that you're playing and i'm not just talking about feel them in here literally feel them with your hands Feel what that chord feels like, the shape of it, the way it makes your fingers feel, because you need to remember that so that you can literally play the chord without blinking. And you know what you know what chord that is just by the shape of your hands. OK, so when you feel the shape, you're like, oh, by the shape of that, that's D flat minor. I mean, that's a D flat major. Like I'm a I'ma go random. So let's see. Uh by the shape of this, this is E major. You see what I'm saying? This is why I said you gotta feel your chords. Feel them with your fingers. Feel it in here, but also get it under your fingers to where you don't have to necessarily look down to know what chords you're playing. That helps out a lot too okay it helps out a lot when somebody's trying to teach you a song or you have to learn a song real quick you don't they could be like oh hey give me the give me the uh e minor and you're like okay and then like but you don't have to be like uh now you can just go to it you know what that feels like in your fingers so lesson for the day feel your chords feel them so let's let's keep going so you got and one of the other ways to feel your chords is to play around with them like this so that's how you feel your chords this is one of the things i've been doing for years just feel them So that's an example of what I mean by feel your chords, okay? So we got the progression. Just talk music. Okay, so that's a nice little piece of theory for your talk music. So. Let's go to the next the next key. All right. So, let's go to D. All right. Now, in the key of D, like I said, we're going to approach everything differently. So, in the key of D, I'll do something. I I do certain things in the key of D that I don't do in in any other key. So, 
If I'm just playing Oh So That's just simple talk music Now When you want to go a little deeper This is another circle Okay This is another circle So Go to the six. Now, if you say, okay, that's B in your bass, what's the five of B major? What's the five? F sharp, okay? So if you're in a key of B, one, two, three, four, five. But I'm in the key of D, okay? If I go to the six, and when I go to that six, I say, hmm, I want to go to the five. Okay, let's let's go to the five. But then I say, wait a minute, I want to go to the five of F sharp. What is the five of F sharp major? D flat or C sharp. So what am I doing? Some of y'all know what I'm doing already. That's five. That's fifths. So I'm going from the B. The five of that is F sharp. The five of F sharp is D flat. What's the five of D flat? A flat. So this is another circle. Another circle. So let's see what it sounds like. So we in D. So you say, what? Wait, so I can play that as talk music as well. Take the take the fifth of every note, bass note that I'm hitting and literally play a minor chord. Because if you notice, every chord that I hit for the five was minor. Started off with the B, B minor, then the F sharp minor, and then the D flat minor. And then the A flat minor. Okay? Now you say, can you keep going? Of course. Because when you go to the A flat, what's the five of A flat? E flat. What's the five of E flat? Y'all got it? B flat. What's the five of B flat? F. What's the five of F? C. What's the five of C? G. What's the five of G? D. And you keep going. What's the five of D? A. What's the five of A? E. What's the five of E? B. And right back. So we're going to play that whole circle of fifths, okay? So in the key of D. So, here we go. There's your, there's your E flat minor. And then what's next? B flat minor, what's next? F, F minor, what's next? C minor. What's next? G minor? What's next? D minor? What's next? You could play that chord like this. Or or yeah, like that. Like that. So play that one. And then you go to your A. Then you go to your E. Then you back to Back to the B, to the B minor. So we're gonna do that again. I want you to get that, all right? So your circle of fifths. The only way you can perfect 
your circle of fifths is if you know the theory of every scale, the number system. If you know the number system of all 12 keys, you, you know the circle of fifths, the fourths, you know all of it, okay? So know that first. So if I say go to the three and uh, B, you should know what that is. You should automatically know that's E flat, okay? Or if I say go to the four and A, you automatically know that's D, okay? So, right there, okay? So if I say go to the six and F, you know that's D. Again, D minor. If I say go to the six and E, you know that's D flat. If I say go to the five and G, you know that's D. Like you should know that without even thinking, without even you know, really like, oh, okay, what is that? You should know that, like, like breathing, okay? So, this video was 30 minutes already. Apologize, but I hope you guys are learning this. Hope it's helping you. Uh, so, let's do that circle of fifths again in D. So, here we go. You can literally take that and just keep going around and around and guess what people will never know what you're doing never know they'll be like well i'm gonna say this if they're not musically inclined they won't know what you're doing okay if they can't hear progressions they won't know what you're doing promise you they'll just be like oh that sounds great that sounds nice i like it it's beautiful so that's another theory this is this is how i think when i play Okay, what can I do? And I'm gonna talk. I'm talking about talk music. Okay, so let's go to the E flat. Now E flat is the same with the with the uh, chromatics. You can do that now. In E flat, you can do a couple of things. There's a couple of things that I do in E flat that um, that are fun and taken from other keys. You could take from other keys and put it in E flat. So uh, I'm gonna give you an example of what I'm talking about. So like, let's say you're playing a outro or an ending to something. So some of the things I like to do is this. This is how I think. So you're like, oh, la, la, la. this is the end. Okay, that's how you would end something normally, right? Okay, so this is what I like to do. Hit the hit the one. Okay, and then those are some of the things I like to do. Okay, I'm gonna show you that real quick. So, there you hit the one. Oh, that's that's not the one. <laughs> you can even do that again. Hit the one, then you play this chord. Okay, that's the A minor, A flat minor nine over B. Play that chord, but you see your 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 melody never changes. Okay, so you got that's a B minor eleven. Still got the melody on top. That's an A flat minor nine. K 
Okay. That's the E flat add nine over G. Then I did. That's a G minor thirteen, G flat minor thirteen. Then I play. That's the F minor seven. And then I play. That's the E major seven nine. And then. Major seven, E flat major seven nine. Okay, you can put the B flat in there too if you want to. Okay, so again, this is this is something that I would do in E flat. Okay, so flowing though, flow with it. All right, so you got. That was that was nice. That was nice. Uh, but let's see if we can do something different. So what I did, my bass line was B, B flat, A flat, G, F sharp, F, E. So the only note that I didn't hit leading to the going to the E E flat was the A. Let's see if we can bring that in there. All right. So you got. I did right there was the a diminished seven a a diminished seven yeah oh uh, that's what I did right there all right but I still kept the melody still kept the melody on there all right so I could have did something else here we go uh, yeah. kind of weird but that's a if you want that that's a a sharp 11 yeah so you can you can play around chords if you like it keep it if you don't hey you know some everything don't fit everywhere okay so uh i'm gonna play it again So that's some that's an that's a theory in my head that will work for that. You know, you could do stuff like like you do stuff like that, but all I did was it's pretty much the same thing. I just started on A, but I took B this chord. Oh, actually, I took this chord. That's an A diminished seven. All right. And then you just play your chord. Uh... that left hand right hand so that's an approachment going to the E flat made so you da, da, da. okay so that's something that that I would do one of the things I would do in E flat you know if I was just playing around uh, the way I think so you say, can I apply that to any note? Yeah, take any note, pick a note, 
and then stay on that note and just start playing chords under it okay and see what you come up with see what you come up with you never know you got to try it though so uh and that goes for every key whatever key you in doesn't matter so let's go to e right yeah let's go to e we're in e all right so now that we're in e something that i like to do in e okay um oh man this right here uh that's something i like to do in e um that's a progression that you can actually take and use it to get to your a flat minor to get to your uh four your three, I'm sorry. To get to your three, you can use. You can literally use that. All right. So if you were playing a song that required you. Uh, So if I was playing like Ty Tribbett, you know, I'm gonna try to sneak this in here some kind of way. So if I was playing, I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. So, and then the part where we give glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God forever. So, let's go to that part. We give glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God forever. So, that going to the A flat, you can use that. So, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. So, but approaching it, you can use that. I'm saying, I'm not saying put it in that song, but that's just an example. You can literally, uh, glory to God. You see what I'm saying? Glory to God. I missed it right there. Glory to God. Glory to God. For Glory. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, you could literally take that. I'm not saying, you know, do that when somebody's singing, but if you wanted to throw it in there, it will work. Okay? So, Glory to God. Forever. Forever. You see what I'm saying? Like stuff like that. That's how I think. So that simple progression, I'm gonna give it to you. So you take that's that's your first lick. Oop. Alright, that's your first chord. I'm gonna try to go through this kind of fast, so catch these chords. Okay. So you got So you got Okay So you got That's it right there. That's the whole progression. Okay. 
So that's something <clears throat> in E that I would, you know, try to approach, try to do thinking like what can I put can I build a bridge to something like can I put something in between to give it a little bit more you know like of me like what can I do not to take away from the song but to just add to it to make it even more playable you know so um that's something that I would do uh what did I, did I do anything extra so you got see that I put a B flat minor chord in E natural is that normal no that's not normal so this is the stuff that I'm saying like literally I'm gonna do one more thing and then we're gonna move on to the next key this video is 45 minutes I hope y'all still enjoying it so so literally I put B flat minor in E major. Okay? It's all about placement. I talked about this years ago. I don't know if y'all saw that video, but I'm going to recap. It's all about placement. If I take E major, go to the D flat minor, which is a six, and then I go to. All I did was, what's the relative minor of D flat major? That's all I did. That's how I think. I know it's going to work because of the because of where I'm putting it, okay? So, placement is very important. And then you can manipulate the the melody <clears throat> so it can sound like, "Wait, where are you going? Where are you going?" Oh, you put me back where I should be. Like you didn't know where I was going, but you was like, "Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay." Whew. It's, okay, I'm good now. Like, you didn't know where I was going, but it sounded good when you heard it. So, again. Like, he was like, uh, okay, I like that. So, that's the kind of thing that I like to do. So, literally. And then, other other things that you wouldn't do in E. So <laughs> Oh man, like that that's something that you would normally do, but that's how I think. I just did it on the spot. So, now I started on the on the 2 go from the 2 to the six, and then we went to the three. I'm sorry, that's the six. Then we went to the seven. Okay, I'm gonna try to catch these chords, and then I did this. <laughs> Remember, we're in E, still in E. So that's my left hand, that's my right hand. But you see what I'm saying? Like, approach every key differently. You can play, you can be fluent in all your keys, you know, knowing the basics and everything, but that doesn't mean you have to play the same way in every key or approach every key the same. That, that's boring. To me, that's boring. So if you play the same way you play, and, and like, if I hear you play in, in, in B and then I hear you, play in A and it's the same it, it sounds the same it's like uh okay I, I mean that's cool that you know how to play in, in all your keys but you're not giving me nothing different you're not giving me no kind of uh, feel for that key like every every person has a feel for each key you know so and I'm talking about when you get to that advanced level when you're starting off everything is going to be the same in every key but once you get to a level where I got the basics, I got the rudiments, I got the theory. So let's approach A differently than we will approach C sharp. That's not a bad thing. Doesn't mean you don't you don't know how to it doesn't mean you don't know how to play fluently in every key. It just means 
I do know how to play fluently <clears throat> in every key. I just don't want to play the same in every key. I want to explore each key as its own individual world map. So when I'm in the world of A, it shouldn't be just like the world of B. We know they have scales and they have major minor chords, but where you play certain things will be different from A versus B, okay? It's a different world. So that's how I approach when I play. So literally, we're in E, and be, it, because of the way I think, I was able to discover Like that, you can't discover things like that if you approach every key the same. So you're you're just staying basic. I'm gonna do this same thing, same way I do it, and and C sharp. No, be different in every key. So if you're a jazz musician and you're playing, when you play, when you go to E from E flat. We should know that we should hear a difference, feel a difference, okay? So if you hear the jazz greats play, if you ever heard Art Tatum play and he modulated, you he literally took that same song, modulated, but played it differently in that key, okay? That's the stuff I'm talking about. So anyway, let's keep going. So I hope y'all got that chord. All right, now we go to... Uh, F. Now, F is probably one of my favorite keys as well. Um, the way I approach F, you know what I think about? I think about stuff like this <laughs> you see that like I, th there's no way I'm thinking like that in another key like th that's just the way it feels to me okay so again I'm gonna try to do that again I oh, know I didn't do that. Uh, okay, <laughs> let's do that again. Like you see what I'm saying? Like, and that's just me messing around. That's that's the things that go in my head. What can I try different? What can I do different in this key? Okay, and practice it as much as possible, just doing being different. So, what I did was took something simple, that's all I did, and that's an E sus4 over B. You know, sus chords are like, you know, I don't, I don't hear them a lot. You know where I be. I don't play. People don't play them a lot. Like the sus chords are like the 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 um, chord. You know, like you see a person and you be like, oh, I haven't seen that person in a long time. That's how sus chords are to me. Like they don't. People don't play them a lot. Like that. Like sus two. I don't hear these no more. So. It's nice to be able to be like, oh, let's put some sus chords and, you know, uh, some jazz stuff. So, so you got. It. And see what I did right there. See that? That's a G13. And then I went minor. Okay, so I did. So 
just trying stuff, thinking about the theory, the key that you're in, obviously knowing the theory behind the key that you're in, the scale, everything, the number system, the uh, triads and all that stuff, and then building on to that and knowing what what uh, you can you can do from knowing the basics okay so this is what we're gonna do first of all I want to say thank you guys for watching this is not the end of this video if you want part two of this video this is this video is already an hour or well, 55 minutes if you want part two make sure you key in on that like button we stopped at F if you want me to continue and go all the way from F sharp G A flat A B flat B key in on that like button subscribe to join the keys team and if you would like to donate cash app my cash app is up on the screen if you want to it's, it's down below in the description as well if you want to help out you know support the channel we're still trying to get an organ so that we can do organ videos because I really want to get you guys I know some of y'all never seen me play the organ before or heard me play the organ or whatever we, we're still trying to do that so if you guys want to help support you can donate the cash app you know I would appreciate it if you don't it's okay just you know continue to watch and learn and grow with me and you know just share the video check me out on Facebook I love you guys and hit the like button part two will be here as long as you guys want it I will finish it and then I'll upload it and then you guys will have the full video of all 12 keys all right I love you guys I'm out of here Peace.